know we're very excited because it's Crofts next week. Yes. And, you know, you've got quite a platform when we go to Crofts because you are an English toy terrier that are becoming increasingly rare as one of the British vulnerable breeds that are showcased at Crufts and will be again this year. So we're going to get a bit of a head start on this and talk to our great friend Johnny Nagler, who also has an English Toy Terrier. I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to Adults Life. Johnny, thanks for meeting us up here on the heat. That's a pleasure. Nice to see you again. Lovely to see you and to see Milo again. Milo and Mr Binks, just to explain to listeners, have something in common. They're both the same breed of dog. <laughs> Must be why we get on so well. Yes, indeed. Well, well probably you know. the only reason. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> what a lovely sunny day it is. <laughs> so, but we're here actually to just have a chat, aren't we, about the English Toy Terrier? Indeed, we are. So, when did you first, you know, discover the breed and want to get one? When I was growing up, we had a Doberman, and as I got older. The Doberman was not going to be practical. And I had this particular thing for the vulnerable native British and Irish breeds. And I thought that's where I'd start to look for my next dog. And, of course, knowing a bit about them and the Manchesters, I thought that that, uh, uh, an English Toy Terrier would fit the bill for my new lifestyle. Um... And that has been the case, and for the last 10 or so years, I've only had English Toy Terriers. Yes, because you, you had one actually before Milo. I've had, I've had, yes, I had a little girl before Milo. Yes. Annie. Annie. And you've also, in your past, owned a Bull Terrier, which was one of well, the other we, reasons exactly. why we, we kind of got chatting. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it's interesting, isn't it, looking at a bigger picture here, how dogs do provide that icebreaker, you know, yes. that I don't feel you can get on social media. It's no. living in the moment, all these wonderful things that dogs bring us. And we're cross next week, though, Johnny. I, I agree with you. I think to have a chat about the vulnerable breeds is, is, is so relevant. Absolutely. I mean, we know that there are 30, 32 vulnerable breeds where there are less than 300, uh, you know, puppies born a year. In the case of English Toy Terriers, uh, I believe the numbers aren't fully out. I believe it's 63 puppies uh, in 2022, which is actually down from the 101 in in the year before, which is, um, you know, upsetting. Um, And this is obviously... Uh, when we look at the numbers around the world, we think there are probably 1,500 to 2,000 born only um, around the world. When you compare that to other endangered animals that get a massively high profile, uh, you know, elephants, tigers, polar bears, the melting ice cap, etc., you think, why aren't these people looking at these homebred? dogs and making sure that they put the same effort into preserving and conserving them uh, as they do for animals that they don't have that connection with because they don't live in the same geographical location. Well yeah and obviously a white rhino is a bit big to have in your front room. No but it's the fundraising that goes along with it around the world is just um, you know I mean it's very necessary but you could do an awful lot more on an awful lot less with these 30 odd breeds that are native to these this country and that we have a direct association with absolutely i can't i mean listen i'm on your page with it you know also because we've evolved epigenetically with these breeds um they're kind of we're i think we're more in their dna than we actually realize and vice versa you know i mean so the english toy terrier um it's awful to think they are rarer than the giant panda <laughs> Isn't yes, it, I know? mean it, 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 it is shocking, and unfortunately, um, you know, there's a lack of education. Although everyone does their best, but unfortunately, social media is a, a double-edged sword. It does allow people to um, find out about you know animals or dogs that they wouldn't normally know about. But at the same time, it allows the promotion of uh, you know breeds that that. that become very popular because they become fashion items and you then get these you know the popularity of the flat nosed breeds or the long bodied short legged breeds etc uh, and and people because they are so available 
capitalise on that and make an awful lot of money out of breeding them very, very quickly and very, very badly. And the members of the public just are not aware as aware as they should be or could be, let's say. Yeah. So that's very, um, you know, that's why I've tried with what I've been doing myself on social media and with the English Toy Terriers and all the vulnerable breeds to, I say promote, but promote through education rather than, you know, uh, being being too trying to make them into a fashion item because there aren't the quantities available even if you wanted one I think it's a long way <laughs> away from being yes. a fashion item yeah. with the ETT at the minute but it's true Johnny I mean you know since we've been friends you've you've set up this wonderful UK wide walking group where people travel literally far and wide yeah. I join in when I can in London on yeah. these walks we have... where ETTs are in abundance and they look brilliant together yeah we it... always get stopped don't we you know yeah, always asked, what, are these, you know, what are these dogs and people yeah. literally stand a, a gate when you see I mean if you think if you think that there are there there are, there are 76 English toy terriers uh, going to be entered into crufts this year um, I've got a group a private whatsapp group of 70 English toy terriers none of which show well, very few of which show a few of them do but the majority of them are pet owners uh, with English toy terriers and the majority of those pet owners have never seen apart from when they collected their puppy another English toy terrier and over a period of, in fact next weekend is the fifth anniversary oh, of the very first meeting that I had with um, the lovely Stephanie and Curtis, who I found on uh, Instagram, because that's the only place I operate, there's a nice friendly environment, and with pretty pictures, uh, where I managed to convince her to meet me, and she didn't think I was some mad lunatic. <laughs> that was really? <laughs> uh, you know, to, to meet me with Curtis, and from that we now have uh, groups of 30 plus, do or 30 dogs, regularly uh, coming together from as you say far and wide oh it's so much fun the last one was at christmas so i used to bring prudence didn't yes. i my bull yeah, terrier exactly. a lot. yeah and it's, it's really lovely it's really really lovely but look so let's chat a bit more about there's a lot going on though johnny people are trying to save the ett and you're doing a lot with a lovely lady called marianne can we touch on that a bit so marianne has got a fascinating history uh, Marion Jackson Moss, her family she discovered about 10 years ago uh, were the top breeders in London at the time, I'm talking about at the time, the 1850s of English Toy Terriers, to such a degree that I believe, and I may have to be corrected, that her family bred English Toy Terriers that were sold to Queen Victoria and the Danish Royal Family. Wow. Since she discovered this, she has started looking into the history because she uh, you know, loves ancestry and so on and so forth, family history. And after years and years of research at the British Library and at the Kennel Club Library, which is the most amazing place to go to, um, she finally got herself uh, uh, her own English Toy Terrier and over the last actually again another anniversary literally from last weekend a year ago she'd come on our walks and we were talking and I said I'm going to the Kennel Club Library to see an exhibition of funny, a vulnerable breed photos put together by a girl called Maddie Elise um, they were all over Crufts last year Anyway, Marion said, I'd like to come to that. I haven't been to the Kennel Club Library for ages. I said, well, when you do, let me know. I'll meet you because it's a nice day out. I, I enjoy it. Since then, she's sucked me in, so to speak, into learning more and more about the breed and helping her with the research, a lot of which she does um, in conjunction and on behalf of and with uh, Dr. Steve Inch, OBE, who was the former archivist of the official Ken uh, um, English Toy Terrier Club. And um, now he's set up his own heritage page. He produces some lovely booklets, which are all now in the Kennel Club Library, accessible for what, just everyone. just on ETT? Just on English oh, Toy Terrier. Oh, gosh, I must get so, one of those. So, so, but it's going quite well, this research. I mean, it's only been a year, but, you know, there's some... For me... 
for yeah. her it's been since 2016 right she's been yeah. You know, yeah. looking into her family history yeah so, how, how moving though yeah and, and yeah and i know her granddad bred some some champions and there's a picture somewhere of him with a trophy yeah yeah there, there is i i don't recall the detail of it because there is so much with a history going back so far and a lot of it is actually recorded recorded i can't retain it the information i don't have that mindset she certainly does and um and the ability to record it but i help you know open a few doors here and there and, yeah uh, and, uh, and 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 you know dig out bits of paperwork you know you talk about you know the mid 1800s and you know i wrote an article actually recently for um countryside magazine because the lovely journo does a vulnerable breed every month right so this is great because yeah. it's all raising awareness yes and um you know all dogs have a purpose or at least breeds do whether these designer crossbreeds really have a purpose who knows because they've well, never been mixed. companion dogs i suppose well they're mixed together yeah. well let's not go there no indeed um so but here look so basically way back in the mid 1800s before we had drains and sewers we relied you know on the english toy terrier and all the terriers yeah, to for, save us from you know vermin control. rats yes you know because we didn't have drains yeah we of, didn't have drains and 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 sewers you know yeah but there, I want to go to this place, Johnny. Have you been to this pub in Bunhill Row, which is in EC1, which apparently is where Tiny Tim lived in 1848. He weighed only 2.5 kilos, yet it's recorded that he killed 200 rats. I'm just reading from my article. Yes. 200 rats in less than an hour. There's an oil painting uh, of him in the Museum of London, which shows that the breed looks exactly the same as it does then to today, a hundred years later, which for me as well, because of all the problems we, we see with, you know, over-exaggeration of features in certain breeds yeah. is so heartening. They do actually look the same as when Hogarth did an etching of them as well. Little black dogs, lithe bodies, pointy ears, yeah. all black and tan, Johnny. They're very, they, they are very similar to today. I think the breed has, um, you know, as, as do all breeds over that period of time, go through certain genetic changes. And, you know, uh, as with all breeds, there have been some medical issues in, in you know, but only very few in our, in, in our breed, in this English Toy Terrier breed. But they've managed to eradicate that or at least, you know, uh, find genetic testing for it. So they have changed shape and size maybe slightly. But yes, you can definitely see today's English Toy Terrier and you can look at, as you say, paintings and pictures from a hundred years ago and go, that is definitely an English Toy Terrier. There's no mistaking it. Even at the, the there's a famous painting that the Kennel Club, I believe, have got of, of, of the um, the very first officially sort of a dog show in going back into sort of those Victorian times, and you can see clear as day. You, you can see you know bull terriers, English toy terriers, uh, cavaliers, you know King Charles's, uh, etc. Sat there in a mm, pub mm. where they were trying to formalise dog showing rules so once once uh, you know advances were made social advances were made in the people's living conditions the dogs that were working dogs became somewhat superfluous and they didn't have a a, a, a role as they used to have and they started to you know formulate uh, showing etc etc Mm -mm. No, so I've brought some dog books with me, haven't I? Yeah. So this one that we're looking at is very old. I had this when I was about eight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost an antique. <laughs> uh, and in here, it references that in about 1904, what happened was people crossed the English Toy Terrier with the Italian Greyhound, which we know is a very ancient breed. We know that from fine art because, you know, yes. Leonardo painted yes. Italian Greyhound sitting on lovely ladies knees and things so um isn't that interesting there are, there are lots of theories about how the english terrier developed its shape um as it is now i have one that slightly probably would be maybe deemed controversial some people say that they're a smaller version of the manchester terrier and i feel that it's slightly the other way around the manchester terrier is a bigger version of the english toy terrier i think that 
I saw somewhere once some text referring to the Romans saying the English terrier or terroir to go to ground uh, is, is where that word comes from, is what they were bred for, was black and tan. And I think it must have been something border terrier, a bit wirier of coat, and there were. They used to be a wire coated or a longer haired version of these guys, just as there used to be a, an English white terrier that was all white. That has gone extinct. I know, I know. Um, but That's I think they, they crossed this border yeah. terrier with an Italian greyhound, maybe a Cineco Deletna, which is a direct descendant of the Pharaoh hound. And, what, and then they see. came in with the and Romans. Then they, and then they came over with the Romans and they, they brought their yeah. their dogs and yeah. mixed it with our dogs yeah. to get this slightly you know, this more lithe, more agile, yeah. quicker. And then it was fine-tuned in the fine Victorian tuned and era. And then fine-tuned and then it was fine-tuned to what we see today o o o over that last hundred years. You know, years. as I suppose people, you know, cities became more dense or whatever, yeah. you know, and capital capitalism began and all that in the Victorian well, also era. Also, we, we improve, like you say, improvements to sanitation and yeah. also once you know they still needed in you know in the tenement buildings the same way as yorkshire terriers were bred to go underneath the looms and in, yeah, in the, in the yeah, mills and yeah. get the rats these guys were built for you know, you know uh, 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 the same purpose but in a different environment once the industrialization of, of you know effectively of of vermin control came along with maybe with drugs or, or with chemicals etc yeah, but that was fairly that, recent that, well, it, well, not 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 that i mean you know there wasn't this need, and also better sanitation. There were, le you know, they, supposedly yeah. there were less rats, but um, but yeah, well, they're just all underground at the moment, Johnny. They're all there, I'm <laughs> sure. There. You're, never, you're never further than six exactly. away from one. No, but also it was in the Victorian era, wasn't it? I mean, before the internet and all that jazz, um, they loved their blood sports, didn't they? The Victorians, I mean, yes. and and one of the purposes of the ETT was to provide a sport um, for down in your tavern, and yes. you know, rather yeah. than having you know a pool table. Now, you know yes. they'd have a pit full of rats, yes. and then you know, your sportives would bring their dogs, and people would bet on the dog that would kill the most rats yes. in a given time, and that's where this Tim, little Tim, the one yes. the dog excelled. Yes. So kind of mad. So I suppose killing vermin at the same time as giving entertainment. The dog and duck, you know, on Dean Street. Yes. That had them right in there. Is that funny? I haven't done. I haven't been to the old sites where these uh, rat pits oh, were. Oh, we should go. But I'm planning to try and organise a a little. I uh, say a walking tour. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get a half a dozen or a few English toy terriers together to go back to those places to try to try and rec try and recreate that. Uh, yeah, no. I'm just looking for this, where Tiny Tim actually lived. Hang on, because the pub is still there. I'm sure. I, I, uh, yeah, a couple of them are, but obviously they... I, 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 there's one in, there well, was one in Finsbury Road. Park, and there's one in... Bunhill Road. Yeah. Bunhill Row um, is where it is. Well, we need but to bring look that it, up. Bringing it right up to date, in, in America, of course, they have a sport called Barn Hunt, which is basically... Um, a barn with a load of straw bales and secreted around the barn at various locations hidden from the view of the, the, the owners of the dogs are live rats in small cages. Right. And the dogs have to go in there and identify the position of the rats. Oh, what you know, fun. Well, and, it's, sent, and it's sent work. It's sent, it, <laughs> effectively, it's sent work. And it's something that has now... Um, coming over to the UK as an organised oh. an organised oh, event. Oh, let me know about that. You know, so the, the, there's a possibility that we may um, look into doing that. I don't I don't think it will be live rats. It will just be a scent, and I don't think it will be the, the scent of a rat, but something rather smelly that the dogs are attracted to, because we don't want our, our dogs going after rats, uh, particularly urban rats, where there might be poisons involved. No, 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 of and course. And the, the dog picks up and ingests the poison through the rat. Exactly, exactly. No, but Mr. Binks, gosh, he he drive all gremlin, you know, yes. for a mouse. Oh yes, exactly. I mean, he's keen on a mouse. He's yes. on it. Whereas yes. Prudence, it's like clueless. I'll be honest about what's going on. But we've had a couple of incidents. He's um, he's caught them. He's caught them yeah. out in fields and things like that. I'm not right. too concerned. Yesterday in Primrose Hill, I he was off the lead as usual. I I look at 50 yards away and I can see a lady with a lead with something attached to the bottom of it very close to the ground and oh, I thought no. I know exactly what that is a rabbit two, no two ferrets 
ferrets. I, I got Milo quickly on the lead because yeah, I didn't know how he was going to react. <laughs> and we went over to see to, to see them. They live with two cats that are terrified of them because they've got quite a good bite. Oh no, it's ferret. And, oh my god. But you lab, they Labrador, off. their Labrador curls up with they curl up with the Labrador to sleep. Aww. So they complete Milo thought they were the best thing since sliced bread. How funny. Nose to nose with them, sniffing them. They were having a play with him. Well, a lot of it, Johnny. Yeah, but a lot of it's to do. It's the same with dogs and cats. The cat that doesn't run, yeah. the dog likes. Right, exactly. Okay, if that cat runs, runs. or if that ferret had so run, pl- exactly he would have been after it. He would have been after it, after and it straight away. And then instinct is yeah, kicking in, thing, you yeah. know, from his ancient ancestors. Yeah, rat, rat, rat. I know. But <laughs> no. he was very, very, he was, he, no, lovely. It, it was very amusing. Quickly though, but Milo's also quite a famous pet therapy dog. He's one of the... Showing that the English Toy Terrier is so versatile. Everyone must think about uh, the Toy Terrier. This is what we do at Discover Dogs. Yeah. You know, we show people... I I always dress him up in his... uh, Put his Pets as Therapy outfit on. He was the third one... There is uh, one lady, Julie Crowley, that has four now, and there is another lady, Melanie Winter, who has one as well. So we, there are a half a dozen. But they pets. make great dogs to go into care homes and they so make, on because they're small, they're, they're very hairless as yep. breeds go, you know, yep. very smooth coated. You do need you need dogs of all shapes and sizes for all different situations. Okay. You know, even a even a Great Dane can go into a, uh, an, an old care home, you know, people's yeah, care yeah, home, okay. and put their head sure. on the pillow, yeah. whereas these guys can no. sort of sit on their laps. Yes. So you need a little bit yeah. of it. So yeah, so but it's great to show them off what they can, what they exactly. can do. Exactly, and it's, you, you know, know, great charity for them to be, you know, flying the flag for as well. So yes. I love that. Yeah. But they are, aren't they, Johnny? I mean, I, I mean, either, I mean, Binks has lived in the country, <laughs> not for that long, and then he's spent most of his life, obviously, in London, where his ancestors were really from yeah but you know they're good for town or country Perfect. they're tiny they weigh yeah, about five neat kilos and clean and tidy. they don't eat too much their poops are proportional yeah. which is also a bonus at the moment because i'm my, amazed that they're not my main bugbear johnny is this i can't believe we haven't trodden in dog poo yet to get to this bit right. of the heat because it's everywhere because no one's picking it up anymore but shall we save that for another episode well, I think so. <laughs> yeah so johnny i mean um with crufts coming up you know um Let's hope people notice the Toy Terrier when they're walking around Discover Dogs. Well, exactly. I mean, Discover Dogs is, uh, you know, a, a, a twice yearly event at Crufts and also in London. Um, and you've got all the, all the main breeds of dog there, um, all the vulnerable breeds of dog There's there. There's over 220 breeds, you see. Exactly. And when you say that to someone, people go, really? Yeah. I thought there was only a cockapoo and a labradoodle available <laughs> to buy. <laughs> Yeah, that's not the case. This is the problem, though. That's what's that. That's what's you know in everybody's faces and what you see all the time. But uh, as I say, the vulnerable breeds really need all the support that they can get. We'll be there on the Discover Dog stand at Crufts, as we are. Milo will be wearing his uh, Pets of Therapy uniform to illustrate that these dogs have a you know a role outside being just uh, you know companion dogs, um, and. It would be lovely to see as many people as we can. Jingle, jingle, Milo. Uh, You're jingling on the podcast with your bells. (laughs) (laughs) When you've got a very dark dog around, it's very useful to know where they are and if I can hear them. Um, Absolutely. I mean, I lose Mr. Binks in my garden on a night. You know, you can't see them. For That is the thing. Do you think that's one of the reasons they're not that popular, Johnny? Because they are black and tan. Because let's face it, black dogs don't photograph as well as non-black dogs, and it's Instagram, isn't it? I, I have heard, I have heard that this this thing about you know the black dogs and the black cats are the least last ones yeah. to get rehomed. Goes back to medieval days and is, is and, that what and it this is? myth, yeah, that I, black dogs and obviously black cats associated with witches. And yet, bizarrely, of course, you know, if you have a black car, it's very smart, so to speak. You know, all your limbs, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I I, of that. It's never crossed my mind that the. That, 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 that the um, that it's because they're they're not popular because I think it's more this. Everyone says a terrier. You mean oh well, they're they're difficult. They're yappy. They're they're barky. Look, he hasn't barked in half an hour of us talking. No, and no, and the other barking off, that is a terrier, is, but you know, not an ETT but, for but, the record. But, but Milo, Milo's, you know, I I, I, you never I, I think I think dogs. I think dogs are like. 
it depends on how they're brought up. Exactly. And it doesn't matter what breed it is. You can have a badly behaved Labrador or Retriever that, that's a bit all over the place. You can have a very, very well behaved Terrier that is, you know, uh, just very simple and easy to, to, to live with. I think you've hit the nail on the head there, really, Johnny. It's about thinking about what your dog was originally bred for um, so that you can understand its quirks and yes. its personality yes. traits and its propensity to perhaps dig, yes. whereas other dogs might never dig yes. a hole or, yeah. you know, um, and, and that's something that, you know, I see every day people have no idea. No, people um, buy dogs that they see it and they go, that's cute, where that's, can I get yes. one? I want one tomorrow. Yes. Well, that's just not going to happen with these guys no. because if you do want one, you've got to be got to interviewed them, by all years? the, you know, by, you know, certainly a few years and people won't wait that long. And in addition to that, they are very, very careful as to where the dogs go and who, who, who they're, you know, what homes they go into because we want to make sure that they're, they're not just, you know, I want one of those and I've got one, um, you know, so we want to make sure that they're looked after properly as everyone as a responsible breeders should do. Yeah, and uh, take on their personality, and, and, which is, you know, they are quite special, I would say, having obviously own bull terriers and yeah yeah you know, they are quite fragile in comparison to say a bull terrier yes um I've you know they them. they are slightly built yeah. which a bit you know we chatted about the italian greyhound yeah. there they're known for breaking legs especially when they're you know. very young and exactly. they've got their legs are green until they get to even these guys you know six nine months you know a year old you want to be more careful yeah. than you would do with like you say, your prudence kind of thing, yeah, you know, your yeah. bull terrier. That's it. I mean, we've seen Prudence and Milo charging around <laughs> together, and Prudence with her shovel-like muzzle has She's literally, Lara Croft. Yeah, has well, literally gone barreling into him, and Milo's gone tumbling in the when, air. There was a day when you had to look after Prudence. Oh yes. And you had to walk her on the heath and everything. Yeah, she was fabulous. Uh, I yeah. love her. But yeah, I'm no, used yeah. to her. Yeah, And I'm exactly. used to that breed as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, she's so, not. You know, she can overwhelm people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but but she's I, I you know to me I, oh she's great I, you know, I know she's I adorable know. And, yeah you know. but so there's differences even in terriers yes you know. absolutely um, absolutely Dif you know built for different things that's or, it but they've got the same name I think it's the terrier bit that puts people off somewhat but I think they've made a big mistake because something like this or your Norwiches or your Norfolk's little neat okay they're hairier but you can keep them you know, neatly, neatly trimmed. Mm. Yeah, these dogs are so easy to manage. Well, they no literally grooming are, cost. I mean, it is a cost of, yeah, cost of cost, living crisis, right. you know. And, that, yeah. um, and grooming is yeah. really expensive. Yeah, it's about sixty-five pounds for a small is it? dog. I mean, I've know, never looked six, into it. I mean, I've never for, for a West Highland Terrier. We've had got friends with it. it you know, you've got two of those. That's one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty pounds every six weeks yeah. if you want to keep them neat and tidy. Yeah, or learn and to do it yourself. Or learn to do yeah. it yourself. I mean, that's what people did in the old. Days. I feel as well a bit at the moment with dog ownership is that uh, none a of fashion accessory. Well, yeah, it, well, I was going to say, yeah, definitely that, but kind of more worse in so much as we're not doing anything with our dogs anymore. You know, arguably not everyone walks their dog no. every day for no. example for example you know grooming dogs i mean look i groom binks and prove what i have to do which yeah. is do their nails yeah. and give them an occasional yeah. bath well prue is more than a case because yeah. she rolls a lot in fox poo but um you know she's great she's trained to do it to a t she enjoys it she knows when she's rolled in it she yeah. knows that's it we're going home yeah. it's so funny she knows the drill when we get through that front door it's straight to the bathroom no <laughs> hanky panky she waits for me to lift her into the bath where she sits patiently right as i prepare yeah. the temperature of the water and it's so funny because her face is so like sorry <laughs> you know sorry not but, sorry <laughs> sorry not sorry exactly exactly so you know anyone can do this you know it's really not yeah. difficult and um but it's time isn't it and, it, and it's you know the time you've got to have time with your dog or why yeah. get a dog i mean the other big thing that we've seen over the last couple of years obviously with the whole lockdown business is, is, is you know people are struggling with let's i'm not going to say mental health i'll call it anxiety because i don't want to tarnish everybody's got some illness but the the having a dog that has to be walked makes you go out yeah, if course. you go out you get some exercise and it helps and punctuate your you day then talk to someone else exactly. that when you might be on your own or you might be having a bad day or you bump into someone with the dog how did we meet i had a dog 
you had the same breed. I wanted to get some assistance from you and some ask you some information, so I came to find you. We've now got a friendship going back several years through having a particular breed of dog and having the same interests, etc., etc. That's got to be a good thing for, for you, of know, course. you know. Of course, uh, and I just think you know this um, this this situation where everyone I think and I think social media has really created this is that it's a right to have a dog. I mean, I was saying way back in two thousand and two, it's a privilege to be mm. able to bring a dog into your life, and you have to make some sacrifices. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we can't have everything. We're so used as humans to have everything now, um, and that is all going to stop quite soon, I think, actually. <laughs> but but it, we're it's very about very fortunate. changing your life. Yeah, we're very fortunate in London, though. We're very fortunate in London, and we don't know how lucky we are. Why? Because in London, you literally walk down the high street, and there is a dog bowl outside every other every other shop, cafe, restaurant, whatever. You can take dogs in so many places. You move outside, let's call it the M25, or a bit further afield, and people really struggle to take their dogs with them. Now, for me, Milo's so well behaved, uh, etc. Uh, that, that I will take him everywhere with me. I mean, literally, he's been to weddings, funerals, bar mitzvahs, the whole, the whole nine yards. And, you know, people look at you, I had to go and have a, I had to go and have a, to the doctors, and he came with me. Now, that's not the case everywhere else. So we are fortunate. And I think that's why dog ownership is higher in towns and cities. You've also got maybe people that, uh, you know, are, are single and have dogs as companions. And that's why, you know, I would say and advocate, if you are looking for a dog and thinking that you're going to give a dog a home, please start with the British and Irish native vulnerable breeds. Come and see us at Crufts. Come yes. and see us at Discover Dogs. So you're going to be there, obviously, at Crufts, because yes. it is next week, Johnny. Yes, it is. Gosh, I'm getting quite excited about it, really. So are you are you going to be there, obviously? Uh, yes, we are. We will, we will be there. We will be on the Discover Dogs English Toy Terrier stand. We will be wearing our Pets as Therapy uniform to uh, show people that these dogs are not just things that you... Uh, have as a companion and that you know they have can they have a purpose that might not be their original purpose but they are adaptable um as i say not every dog can be of course i've got his sister she likes three people three dogs and has a <laughs> instant dislike for children from 100 meters away for no reason at all <laughs> Uh, they were both brought up exactly the same way. Go figure. There you go. No, it's like identical twins. Exactly. They can have completely different yep. personalities and preferences. Yep. But, Johnny, I'll see you up at Crufts then. Um, can me and Mr Binks come on the Discover Dog stand Absolutely. for a bit? Absolutely. We'd love to have you there. Fantastic. Huh? Well, I'll see you there, if not before. Indeed. Lovely to meet you. Oh, again. thanks, Johnny. Bye. That's our show, Mr Binks. Yes, I know, you loved hanging out with Milo on the Heath. Yes, and you're right, it is time for Woof of the Week. <laughs> so when you're thinking about what type of dog to bring into your life, go on, check out the British Vulnerable Breeds. There's bound to be a dog there that tickles your fancy. <laughs> well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please rate and review the show wherever you tune into your podcasts. Thanks again to Johnny Nagler for joining us today. And all the links are in the show notes. Thanks to Mike Hansen for recording us today on the Heath. Find out more about Mike at Pod People UK. And for me, I'm just at Anna Webb Dogs. What's that, Mr Binks? Yes, you're right. We will be in your feed next Sunday. So go on, subscribe now. It's free. And then you'll never miss another show. Bye for now. Thank you.